we went over some key spots, and I think the play in this in this portion of the video, like I said, wasn't necessarily bad. There was a mistake or two, um, but as a general rule, I think the play set up really well for um, set up really well for shutting down in the last hour of the video and really letting the money just fall to us when we get a hand. And I think that that's something where, like, now that I've established an aggressive image of taking pots away from people, forcing stuff through, uh, that I'll want to, okay, real quickly, that I'll want to just be kind of shutting down shop during the second half of the video. Um, on table three, uh, this is a dream spot. Uh, and let me kind of explain why I think this is a dream spot. Uh, because this is a board that really doesn't hit my under-the-gun opening range. Um, so basically, I've just hit the tip-top of my range in a spot where, like, more likely than not, I'm just going to be giving up on the turn. Um, and so I don't know anything about Dr. Stefan Frank, um, but I'm going to assume it looks like he's at least a somewhat decent regular. So I expect there to be a lot of floats in this range on the flop, because there really should be, because uh, this is a board where a lot of players will be betting the flop, and then, like, with their pocket tens just giving up, pocket jacks giving up, pocket nines giving up, um, their king, queen, they'll be giving up. And so there's a lot of turn cards here where, like, you're just expecting this person to give up. So this is a spot where when I have the top of my range, I basically want to pretend like I have something like that, where... This is and, and like against a, somebody who I play a lot with, I would bet this turn with Ace King because I will be double barreling this turn probably a lot um, as as a bluff uh, because or or even for thin value something like kings or queens because I expect the opponent to be on a lot of floats. So he ends up betting on the turn and this is a spot where I contemplate putting in a check raise um, as I think that really when I check raise it it represents just about nothing um, and so. Now on the river, uh, this is kind of one of those spots where, let me go ahead and, uh, sh I think this is another mistake where I'm not sure that betting here is going to get called by anything worse. Um, it'll only get called by stuff that are like, WTF, this makes no sense. Um, but that being said, like I said, it, on the flop, he's got a lot of nothing. He's got a lot of hands that are just total air balls, pocket fours, pocket deuces, uh, six, seven, that he was looking to just bluff with. And so when I when I bet on the river, it's like it, it, the question becomes like, what am I really hoping happens here? Like, I don't, I mean, I expect to only get called by stuff like ace-jack, ace-queen. Um, and I expect ace-queen to sit there and struggle with it. So this is a spot where I think checking is so much better because I think he's going to have just nothing so often at the time. And he might view that flush as like a decent opportunity to bluff at us. Uh, so, or like that we're holding on with something like kings or queens, because a lot of times um, a weaker regulars will be holding on with those kind of hands. So when I end up donking here, it's just kind of a dumpster fire on my my behalf. Um, I'm not very, very happy with my play. I think that getting him to bluff there would have been a much more profitable excursion. Um, on table four, I think this is an absolute no-brainer. Three bet, and... Uh, he ends up f four bet shoving with ace queen, and I think that's going to be the case um, more often than not. Is he's just gonna be like, uh, screw this guy. He keeps picking on me, and that's why, like when I was squeezing before, I did not want to. I didn't really want to push on him with a weaker hand because I thought he was just waiting to push back. Um, okay, <laughs> on table two, this is kind of an interesting spot where I go for really thin value, and I'll let this one. Uh, kind of be the last hand of the last hand of this video, whereas I kind of talk about. Well, we'll let the kings be the last hand of the video. But this is a spot where I think he's going to call worse spades, and he's just gonna like he's gonna see that seven bucks. He's gonna be like, crap! I have the nine of spades. I have the four of spades. I have the three of spades. I have a flush. It's only seven more bucks. I'm gonna make the call. But I think it's also super duper important to remember that he's never re-raising this as a bluff. Um, that players who, like, when they re-raise here are always going to have the queen of spades um, without any history. And fish especially, like, these are just the kind of boards where bluffing just doesn't make much sense. And so when I raise, I expect him to either spaz out and shove with the nuts, or I expect him to just call, ant antagonize call, or just fold if he's totally bluffing. So, uh, this is a spot where I think raising is fine. I don't think I would raise the nine of spades. I think I would just call it. Um, 
and unfortunately he just spazzes out and jams. Okay, and this is a spot on table three. Now we've been kind of pushing on any lord, and, and sadly I was kind of expecting him to three bet me there, uh, since we've been like stealing from him like 8,000 times in a row. Uh, but he does just flat, and I think that this is another way that guys adapt, is they're going to be flatting, and, it, and it's a good way to adapt as well, is that if he views my range as strong, if he had called the last bet, I would have had like queen six offsuit and been playing post flop with him. Unfortunately he decides to flat when I have the kings, uh, so when the board comes off jack nine, three, obviously great board. And this is the kind of thing where I'm expecting any lord to make plays at me. And so the key is, like, I'm just not going to give him much credit in the pot. Whereas normally, before the dynamic was built, I would expect any lord to be to be just very strong when he decided to put in a raise and put in a stack. But now that we've built the dynamic of kind of pushing on him a ton, uh, I expect him to... Uh, pretty much be just, pretty much just be being in, being just just tired of pushing or tired of getting pushed on. Um, so this turn comes off, and this is a uh, this is a bad turn uh, because I don't expect him to uh, give us three barrels with like a nine anymore. Um, but at the same time, I'm not really worried about being beat. I just don't know how many aces he's really got in his range. So at this point, I'm kind of planning to uh, continue letting him make a play. But at this point, like I wouldn't bet the turn be planning to shove over a turn raise or flat a turn raise and then you know check call a river shove. But this is a spot where like now I'm kind of just going to have to check call down. But I still expect my hand to be good a high percentage of the time uh, when that happens. So he ends up checking back. And at this point, uh, when I see the check back, this is a spot where, like, guys with king-queen here will make the mistake of being like, he's scared of the ace, all right. But that's not what's happening. What's happening is he's got showdown value. He's probably got a jack. He's probably got a nine. He's probably got pocket tens. Um, he's got showdown value when he checks back that turn. If he were to bet, I would say he's far more likely to have nothing. Um, and so I think he could also have, like, an ace-eight type hand here or something like ace-ten. I think that's not out of the realm of possibilities either. But I think betting is going to be necessary because when he checks the turn, he's announcing to me that he's not folding. Um, he's saying, okay, I'm going to keep this pot in control, and I'm going to call any bet that Ringer puts out there on the river. And that's kind of what I'm expecting him to do. So I'm going to bet, hopefully I bet something like 10 or $11 here, uh, where I'm expecting to get called by anything that he decided to check the turn with. Uh, because basically when he calls, and I, I'm an idiot, <laughs> I, don't, I went super small, um, and do end up getting called, I don't, I don't remember what he ended up having here. Um, but let me go ahead and pause the video on that accord.